Liftoff will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. Welcome to Jan Exploration and Discovery. I'm Jared, the Jan and Jan R. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be talking to all of you guitar players out there that may be thinking about buying another guitar, but you really don't know what you could be buying or what you should be buying. I'm also going to be talking to you guys out there who are thinking about, well, I'd like to buy a guitar and I'd like to start, but I don't know where to start because there are so many different types of guitars. And guys, there are a lot of types of guitars out there, but the biggest thing that I'm going to tell you guys, and I'll tell you this right now, do not be overwhelmed by it. Guitars are just like so many other things. It's personal preference. It's just like people who date girls, speaking all you guys out there, or vice versa. Guys, it just depends on who's looking and what you're looking for at that time. So just remember that and you'll be okay. There's a lot of different things out there, tastes, so to speak. A lot of so many different brands are popping up out of the blue just like with cars so that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video so with all that being said should you go out and buy the most expensive guitar that you can in the beginning or buy the highest brand name that's the most expensive most likely now the big thing that you got to remember about this is price does not always equal quality with everything Gibson guitars really renowned name and one of the top three, three in my book, as far as the guitar brand names go. But here a couple years ago, they decided to add those auto tuners onto their guitars. And when they did that, a lot of malfunctions. The guitar would try to auto tune itself. There was things going on. It would actually try to tune itself on stage and actually would tune itself out of tune because they were supposed to correct themselves and they were supposed to auto tune themselves to be able to be on note and on key all the time. But that didn't work out too well for Gibson. Then they had to come in, and all the guitars that are still in their stores, such as Guitar Centers and all these other stores, they had to come in and actually take all that stuff off of them and redo them because they were having recalls because they just were not working that well. It was really more of a test thing at that point anyway. But there are still some of those guitars out there that have those auto-tuners on them, but very few people kept them. A lot of people were trying to return them, and they just did not work out that well. They're actually going out of tune a lot more now, that's the other big thing behind Gibsons. A lot of people out there will tell you various things, and it really depends on what your experience has been with guitars yourself. A lot of people out there will tell you, well, they'll never buy a Gibson because they always go out of tune. Well, that may be the case. I have played Gibsons before. They, it depends on what kind of Gibson that you're playing. The lower end ones, I would tend to agree, the, about the $1,000 range, I tend to agree. They do go out of tune easier. But if you get up in the $2,000 range, the $2,500 range, such as the Gibson Hummingbirds and things like that, I've never had a problem with those. And that's the other thing, though, guys. Think about brands. Gibson guitars, you, you probably be fun to use one out there for about seven or 800 bucks. I've never seen it much cheaper than that. I really wouldn't trust one that was much cheaper than that. But you take a guitar like Martin, you could buy a brand new one for $500 on a low end. But again, I would not buy the cheapest one. But again, guys, it is the personal preference. That's just my personal preference. I know what I like. But to all of you guys out there that don't know what you like yet because you haven't actually started playing, I'm going to give you some suggestions. One, the guitar I'm holding right now is a Rogue. Some people would say it Rouge. I just say Rogue, but just like a Nissan Rogue. But this is about an $80 guitar. This was one of the first guitars I ever had that had the electronics on it. Some of you are probably thinking, what the heck does that mean? What it means is, is right here on the front of it, the electronics. It has the built-in tuner, control for volume if you're plugged into an amp. It has the plug-in right there to plug your amp into. Now, a lot of you out there are probably wondering, well, that why don't they all have that? Well, that is don't but that's also going to dictate some of your prices guitars that you can plug in 
to an amp are going to run you more than the ones that you cannot plug into an amp. That's just the way it is. However, like on this guitar, again, best one was $80 after tax. It was like 90 bucks after that. Plug it in. But the big thing is, is that if I'd bought the one that you couldn't plug in, it was only going to be like 50 But for the extra $30 at the end of the day, it was just worth it to me to go ahead and get it. The cool thing about guitars, though, guys, is, is that you can customize them to your preference. Some of you probably have seen artists if you've gone to their concerts and seen their names and laid on their guitar right here. That's a very costly thing to do. And if you have that done on your guitar, have it done by somebody that really knows what they're doing. Guitar, luthier, that really knows their stuff. And if you're going to a place like Nashville, there's a lot of them down there. A lot of music stores in Nashville. They're not in the areas that you think. They're not down by Broadway and things like that. You actually have to go and find them. But Nashville's got one of the coolest guitar centers I've ever been to. It's also one of the biggest guitar centers I've ever been to. But they have all kinds of music shops down there because it is Music City. So if you ever get down that way, guys, go out there and check them out. So the big thing that you got to remember as well, I talked about earlier in this video, preference is such a big thing. Preference is a big thing when it comes to anything. But, like the rose I'm holding right now, the biggest thing is brand doesn't really matter. I have another guitar. I wasn't going to take it out today. It was actually the first one that, that my mom got me. It is actually the most special thing to me. It's actually more precious to me than my Martin. I could lose everything else. They can get destroyed in a flood or a fire. And that, it was just an off-brand guitar, but... It's one of those guitars that I will always keep and hopefully can just keep passing it down. It's something that I hope that will always be around and stay in the family. Now, the biggest thing that you got to remember is, though, too, is that you can't just go based off of color. Yes, girls, I'm talking to you out there. You see something that's pretty and you automatically think that that's the one that you want to buy. Feels a big part. And some of you out there are probably thinking, well, how do I know? what feels good believe me guys you will know what feels good in your hand take your hand run it up and down the neck you can feel it even if you don't know how to play at all you can feel it some people uh, tell you to get the cheapest thing that you can get out there because it's the player that makes the guitar it's not the guitar that makes the player that is kind of true and kind of not true that's like saying that if you were driving a standard Mustang around the NASCAR track, but everybody else was in NASCAR, but Jeff Gordon was driving a Mustang, saying, well, it doesn't matter because it's the driver that makes the car, and that's not the, that's not the way it always works. You have to have something that's at least decent, and amps are a whole nother deal. I'll be doing a whole video on amps and what you should be looking for on those, but guys, this is a good beginner guitar. Now, if you're looking to spend these have gone up now. These are about $120 now. Fender's a good brand. Fender is actually a brand that is highly underrated whenever it comes to their things. Go out there and buy yourself a Fender it, if you really want to think about it. You can get a good Fender guitar for about $300. Bucks. The big thing is, though, guys, remember, talk to them. They can drop the price on it, especially if it's a big guitar. And if you're spending at least $300 on a guitar... Make sure that you go over there and get them to throw in a hard case with it. They will not throw in the hard case with it. Do not buy them from that store. Go somewhere else. Walk out the door. And sometimes, more times than not, they'll be like, oh, wait, come back. We'll give you the case with it. Because those guys work on commission, and they want to try to sell you that guitar. Now, you got to remember this as well, that... Those guys do work on commission, so they will try to push you into the most expensive thing that you can possibly that they get you into. Credit cards are a dangerous thing. Guitar Center has a credit card that you can get, and I don't really recommend that you get it. I mean, it's a good deal, but at the same time, I recommend that you don't get it. I have one. It's not exactly the most... If you're a music person that kind of has impulse buying, I would not suggest that you get one. But, uh, guys, there's all kinds of websites out there. Do your research. There's other people out there. Again, this pros I'm holding. Now, there are different size guitars as well. 
and that is something that I'm going to talk about here next. Different types of guitars. As you can tell now, I've switched over to my three-quarter size. Some of you are probably thinking again, what does that mean? Well, this is a three-quarter size guitar. That Rogue was I, hold, I was holding a while ago, that is an example of a guitar that is a full size. Basically, that's what you call a full size. This is three-quarter size, so it's only three-quarters of a size of a regular guitar. They do make half sizes and various different things, and they make this in all instruments, guys. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, well, maybe not the guitar. They make them in different sizes. They, they make them in banjos. They make them in even violins, fiddles, whatever you call it, you know, guys. And I have to say this, though, too. Put this to rest. A violin and a fiddle are the same exact instrument. It's just how you play them that's different. That's all the difference is. The violin and a fiddle. In country music, it's always called the fiddle because it's played differently. So, back on the guitar topic, though, now. This is one of the coolest little guitars I actually have. I actually bought this last year so I could actually play it at work and keep it in my locker. This guitar cost me about $60, actually. It does not have the hookups for an amp, but I bought it because I wanted to be able to play it between breaks and actually write songs with it, which was actually a really good idea for me. It does have a really nice, what I like about this guitar is it has those old style tuning pegs. And just has a really nice you can buy this guitar on eBay actually it's a pile it is something that I highly recommend that you, if you guys are looking for a good travel size and you're not gonna be playing shows or anything by all means get out there and get yourself a three-quarter size really nice especially if you're flying now if you are going to fly and you have a full size make sure that you're locking your cases and make sure that you have the key on you a lot of people forget to lock their guitar cases. It's really bizarre to me about how people don't do that. And honestly, if you're driving, keep them in your vehicle. I actually know a friend of mine. She actually was going down Broadway with her band. And she was driving down, and it bounced out of the back of the truck because Nashville is notorious for potholes. Anybody that's been there actually knows that. But uh, it bounced out, and her guitar was in the back of the truck and they hit it, it bounced out, they didn't actually realize it, they went back to look for it and actually the fire department, they didn't know that it actually bounced out of the back until the fire department called them and she had some of her business cards in there, being an artist in there and she ended up getting it back because the fire department guys, they were kind enough to call her and give it back to her because the people are just kind of like that in Nashville, people really try to look out especially for musicians down there because it seems like everybody's a musician in Nashville but that is something though to keep in mind as well though too guys keep your guitar if you're traveling inside the cab of your vehicle some of you maybe think well I can't do that it's just a good idea because that was a full-size Gibson inside the case thankfully that bounced out the back but it wasn't locked but if it had been locked then they couldn't have got inside so it's kind of an heavy deal but if it had been locked and the thief had found it, or somebody that wasn't of good nature, then they might have taken it, they might have not have taken it. So, it's just something to, to really think about though, guys. There are different types of guitars, but the care for a guitar as well, and that's what I was leading into with this, caring for a guitar is a whole other thing. If you let them sit around, they'll get dusty. They get scratched up really easy if they're not sitting around. So, Make sure that you're keeping them at least in a gig bag, and I recommend getting hard cases for every guitar you own. I cannot say this enough. Get a hard case for every guitar that you own. If you're out there like using them, they are going to be scratched up. That's just the way it is. Now, price range. A lot of people have talked about this throughout this video. Price range is something, again, this one was 50, 60 bucks. That Rouge I showed you earlier, it was, you know, 90 after taxes now the, there are guitars that get on up there i'm going to show you guys my martin i'm going to show you exactly what the differences are and how that gets into the upper price range just the quality wise all right guys so speaking of my martin here it is it is that nice sunburst color on there and some of you are probably noticing the stickers and stuff on my guitars decals this is my logo GW 
this is a special design that I actually have made for me, and, and, I, and I actually sell these. I have the eagle down here. I had that put on there just because it was a good symbolism. Now, this is a very common Martin guitar. A lot of people play these. A lot of people will love the design of this because just look at that nice design. I mean, a lot of people love these. Back when I bought this guitar, it was about 700 bucks. You buy it now, it's you're pushing about $900 now. But if you guys go into Guitar Center and pick these up, or you go into any guitar shop and pick these up, I say Guitar Center a lot because they're the most helpful that I've seen whenever it comes to new beginner players and people, they really help them out in that way. So, but keep keep mentioning them. I'm not getting anything by mentioning them, but it's just something that I really gotta say because they, they do help out a lot. Now, you might get somebody in there that isn't as helpful, but again, they work on commission, so they really try to help you as much as they can get you into something. Now, the big thing is, this is the Martin X series made in Pennsylvania it is something that really Martin is one of the big three I mentioned earlier that there was three brands that I really love and they are Martin, Gibson and Taylor I do not own a Taylor guitar but all the Taylor guitars I picked up have been phenomenal they are one of the best playing guitars and they're flatter weight to me all the ones I've picked up are now that's something else entirely some guitars are heavier some are lighter it depends on what they're made out of this martin is actually on the lighter side of things but compared to this is the quality wise though too compared to that rouge i showed you earlier it's quite a bit heavier something that a lot of people forget about whenever it comes to picking out a guitar for them is the neck a lot of people don't know anything about the neck measurements they don't know that there's C's and D's and there's all kinds of shapes. There's a lot of things out there. But if you notice, though, if you do this, your hand is not a perfect C. So a lot of guitars that have a C neck are <laughs> kind of bad for people. V necks usually work better for most people. I'm just telling you that. It may not work better for you. You might be that person that actually prefers a C neck. I'm just telling you. Acoustic guitars, though, are kind of weird animals because it's something that like on electrics here there I mean the necks are different the wrists are different but that's the big thing that you guys if you have really big hands you're gonna want a wider neck because the strings are gonna be too close together for you to play I have bigger hands but I don't have like ginormous hands but I don't worry about neck width or anything as much but I will say this a classical guitar feels better to me because the neck is wider this is not a classical guitar that's a whole nother speculation though but the neck is wider but this one right here is actually the right size but you got to understand though too that you have to buy something that fits you personally so just because your brother or your dad or your sister or whoever or their boyfriend or whoever it is actually likes this particular style of guitar and I tell you that you should get one does not mean that it's going to work for you it's not going to be something for you now I said I was going to talk about the quality of Martin Martin guitars are some of the best that I have ever had this is the most expensive guitar I own I'm not big on giving big money for things but guitars is something I make the exception on and hopefully I'm going to end up with another Martin and a Gibson and probably a Taylor here soon I have a pretty good sized guitar collection anybody that that knows me I've actually been downsizing I'm actually down to about 18 now so but it's going to start going back up here really soon but guys the big thing is just because it's a Martin or a Taylor or a Gibson or a Fender or anything like what I mentioned though does not mean that it's the best thing to buy I mean I picked up guitars that you buy offline for 40 bucks it's cheapies what people would consider trash and they feel great I mean, now they're not going to last as long, especially if you're going to play them a lot. That's where high quality stuff like the Martins, the Taylors, and the Gibsons come in. They're going to last you quite a bit longer. Of course, I've always said this stuff too. Whenever it comes to recording music, I mean, in the studio, Martins record the best, but Gibsons play the best live. 
that's just the way that I've always kind of found it to be. It's kind of the way that it's always worked for me. Martin and Gibson are at the top when they kind of fight it out and it's a preference. Most of you are professional, like musicians, they do play Gibson guitars. But a lot of times, though, it's just because that's just kind of what they've had and kind of like what they end up with. You see some of them out there that play like Martins and stuff. I'm a guy that prefers playing a Martin. Now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't play a Gibson if I had one. But as far as that goes, again, guys, I've said it countless times throughout this video, I feel like it's all about preference. You know, which girl's the prettiest? Which vehicle best fits you? It's all about preference. And that's the same thing with instruments. And again, you may not even be a guitar player. But there's a lot of things I've talked about in this video that goes over those same types of ordeals. Now, the big thing is, is that if you're going to be a banjo player, or you're going to play the ukulele, or if you're going to be a piano player, if you're going to do this and that, pianos are another animal entirely, so I'm not going to get into that, because that's something that you get into some crazy things with p pianos. But banjos and things like that. You can get banjos that are on the cheaper side. My banjo cost me 200 bucks. I just got to play around with. It's not something I do a lot with. I wasn't going to give a lot for one. I have a mandolin. It's actually a rouge. It's the same color scheme and the same exact brand as that guitar that I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. But at the end of the day, price is a big factor. Quality is a big factor, and your personal preference is a big factor. Those three things are what determines if you find a guitar that's right for you. And the first one you buy, chances are the first one or two that you buy probably are not going to be ideal for you. They're just going to be something that you can learn on, or you're just kind of upgrading at that time and stuff. It's just something that a lot of people don't understand, though, that you can... There's not an exact science to it, but you can get somebody close. And the closer that you can get to buying one that's the right fit for you, you got to be able to enjoy playing it as well. I've always said that you need to buy a guitar that you can't just let set in the corner because you, it just calls out to you and it wants you to come play it. That's the way I look at it. If it's sitting there and you're like, Man, that thing is just too good looking to let sit there in a the corner and I gotta play it. It's just such a such a good looking instrument. I gotta break it out and make a video and play and shred and do all kinds of crazy things and have an awesome solo on stage and smash it on stage and then I gotta go out and buy about three more because I'm probably gonna do that again. That's the instrument that you should be buying. I don't recommend you actually go and smash it, but I'm just saying. That is the instrument, though, that you should really be looking into, into buying and everything. Martin, Gibsons, Taylors, Fenders, Piles, all kinds of instruments, all different types of brands. And at the end of the day, the only thing that you need to know is which one is the best for you. It may be all of those. It may be none of those. You may pick up... Uh, a ten thousand dollar gibson and be like this thing is a piece of junk and it doesn't feel good in my hands and you may pick up a fifty dollar rouge and it may just be like man this thing is awesome it just it just feels so good in my hands and i man i'm gonna rock out and go on tour and just be a rock star man because we all want to be rock stars that's what nickelback said but at the end of the day though guys it's all personal preference, seriously. I know I talked a lot in this video. I know I kind of went back and forth, back and forth, but there are a lot of things, a lot of things to cover. I'm sure I missed some things, but some basics. Hopefully you guys kind of picked up something on this video. Again, I'm making this video more for people who are new and they don't own a guitar yet and they're looking to buy that first one. There are a lot of good videos out there that can help you, but again, there's no exact science to it. So get out there and start uh, picking them up and again if you can't play just go out there and pick them up and you'll feel it when it's right it's like Harry Potter with his wand it called out to him so the guitar picks the player the player doesn't pick the guitar God bless each and every one of you I'm Jared with General Exploration and Discovery subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads